You've just tuned in into the recording of one of the presentations that was part of our webinar on how to link journeys to business goals. Florian Volme is the service design lead at NCR, a multi-billion dollar company. At NCR, they are managing hundreds of journeys. So how do you make sure that all these journeys are linked and aligned to the top level business objectives? How do you make sure that you're working on the stuff that matters most and make sure that you keep and stay relevant as a service design practice? Florian lifts the curtains and shares how they are working towards that. Fascinating stuff. So make sure you grab your pen and paper and get ready to make some notes. Let's dive right in. All right. Let me share my screen here. Get the te uh, technology out of the way. Sure that are we coming through okay? Yes, loud and clear. Uh, all right. Super. Um, yeah, let me um, spend the next 15 minutes or so share my experiences here at NCR, how we link journeys to business goals. I'll give you a little bit of perspective and background as we go. And um, yeah, Mark, if you want to uh, monitor the Q&A and, and throw in a question as we go along, that'd be, that'd be great as well. Um, so uh, my group of really, really smart service designers, um, we, we are integrated within our experience design team. And for uh, the last few years, we've been mainly focused on UX work, service design for UX, service design for new product development, these journeys that define new features, define new, uh, new experiences within the suite of the products that we sell to in a, in a B2B setting, right? And more recently, for about the last year or so, we have been asked to focus a lot more on the CX and the customer experiences, right? What, how is it to buy from NCR? How is it to be actually a customer? How is it to be serviced and supported from NCR, the end-to-end -end life cycle journey? And then um, very exciting for us too is we have been asked to really look at the employee experience, the internal experience. And it's really, really cool to work for a company where the executive leadership team believes that a good employee experience creates a good customer experience and really having that dependency and that philosophy and that support. So that's that's my practice. That's what we do. And a lot of the value is connecting the dots and seeing which capabilities which pieces of our tech stack may serve uh, our products, may be used in our web CX experiences and may be used internally to drive efficiencies at that, at that corporate scale. Um, just to level set, I thought I'd share sort of the hierarchy in which I think we think about um, business goals and how that interrelates with journeys, journey management, service design. Um, we are very intentional at the core of it. And, and Johan said this earlier, sort of the journey is not, it's it's a means to an end. It's not the presentation artifact. We look at the journeys at that as that connecting tissue that enables cross-functional collaboration, that enables us to focus on the right things, make better decisions faster and so forth. And they're just one part of the puzzle, right? Above that for us, sits sort of the overall business goals, the, the North Star, if you will, where, where is NCR supposed to be going, the, the business trajectory, if you will. And then since we are such a large company with different functional areas, um, different business units and so forth, there's a pretty intentional cascading of those high level business goals, a certain revenue goal, um, a, a certain uh, customer satisfaction goal, uh, NPS goal, and how does that cascade into the different business units? So that's the high level um, hierarchy that we have there. That then informs our journeys. The insights substantiate from below. We measure, right? We listen to the market for, for data. We, we plug in wherever we can uh, tools and methods to get metrics. Um, and attach those then to the journeys. And then, of course, there is the, the doing part. And, and for us at this scale, it's been really awesome to, to use journey management and, and the journey management platform here to, to be very intentional with the hundreds and hundreds of opportunities and capabilities and solutions that we are, that we are managing to say, hey, where can we do what? Now, how do we link these goals to journeys? How do we link these goals to the specific opportunities to help us make better decisions, uh, 
be very intentional with our with our resources and with uh, with our direction. That's what I want to talk about. Um, I want to make it a little bit more real and a mo little bit more specific. One more slide before I get into um, a specific screen share. So this is just sort of recapping that cascading, right? The high-level corporate goals, then the top left, overall revenue, revenue mix, NPS, I just said this. That then cascades into group objectives, simplification, reoccurring revenue as examples there. And so those are sort of, I think of those as macro objectives macro business objectives and that then cascades into more specific micro business objectives what is it specifically that we want to accomplish with a project or with a with a set of initiatives with a new product launch whatever it may be business results how do we measure that specific outcome what is then how do we translate that into specific outcomes and then on the right here just some ideas for this conversation amongst service designers um, what are some of the journey related um initiatives that we can take that can drive those goals. So when I think about this as examples, user experience, business objectives may be improving the product quality, improving overall user satisfaction, the adoption of a specific feature, attach rate. And in italics here is the example that I'm taking to the right. So the adoption of the feature, maybe we want that feature to be used by 10,000 net new users. And to get there in the journey context, we may recommend an in-app guided experience and a campaign, different nudging uh, nudging approaches and so forth. Just a few examples, right? On the customer side, we may have business object objectives like, like a close rate in the sales cycle, um, annual recurring revenue numbers and, and pushing that up, the attach rate, attach rate being if we sell product A, how many people are also buying product B as a package, if you will, really important for our business, better customer service, more efficient customer services, those kinds of things along, again, the B2B customer journey, end-to-end -end customer journey. So the example here, attach rate of product A to product B is whatever percentage, right? Journey-related um, measures that we can take, education campaigns, recommendations, business impact, projections, automation, those kinds of things. Last but not least, employee experience. I'll go a little bit quicker on that. But satisfaction, retention, the overall culture, a lot harder to perhaps measure, but really, really important for, for any company out there, any organization out there. Um, productivity, those kinds of things. Uh, what's the business result? We have a culture where people feel safe to fail, psychological safety. That would be that is not something that you can just measure numerically, right? That's a survey that you have to get to that through other means, but it's a really, a really important business result, if you will. And then on the right, you see some of the things that we may be doing to get there, more comprehensive reviews from people to people, the way we approach um, project management, the way we approach debriefs and continuous learning, those cultural things that may be things that a journey recommends. I want to dive into an example that sits in the world of customer experiences for that top-down example that Mark mentioned. So let's dive into the specifics. Here are some of the group goals. Here are some examples of those group goals. Uh, the group goal may be meaningful, actionable insights. The group goal may be a, sh a continuous shift from the old way of selling hardware and software in a one-up to reoccurring revenue in a subscription model. It may be overall simplification. It may be expanding a wallet share. We, we have a pretty um, robust set of different offers that perform different things for these restaurants and stores and banks. So we may get in with one product. How do we add on additional products within that same customer concept of wallet share? So those are some of the goals in, 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 our, in our group here. And um, if we cascade that down into the journey, we are diving right into um, the second phase of a six-step end-to-end customer journey from evaluate to purchase to onboarding to use to maintain to renew and grow. You see that there on the left of, of, on your screen. Um, and we are zooming in into a moment of the buying experience. And our insights, our research has shown, okay, you know, help me know what to choose and help me uh, create a quote myself, right? If those are the things that I want to um, actually enable with the customer, how does that actually layer up to the bigger picture goals? Um, before I move over the slide, um, I also want to mention that we do have a, we have a very um, robust culture around measuring and managing by the high-level NPS, net promoter score. Um, and we track that at the sort of the high-level journey level. It's, it's a little hard to... Um, cascade down an NPS score into a specific action in a specific 
moment in a journey. So that's sort of more the guiding North Star overall is the collective of all the things that we're doing, pushing that NPS, um, NPS score up, or uh, are we doing something wrong? That, that, that's what that tells us, right? Um, in that example step of the journey, how do we now cascade those bigger picture goals down? And I'm trying to move one of the windows here so I can actually read my screen. There we go. Um, so what we have here is, okay, if the challenge is that they want to be able, if the, the, the customer need is that they want to be able to do more, more things by themselves, maybe the opportunity for innovation broad, in a broader sense here is this notion of self-service configuration of their solution. So it's not something that a salesperson necessarily needs to do any longer. It's something that they can do themselves, just as an example here. And what we're now able to say, it's like, okay, we have these bigger picture goals. We have these higher level goals of simplification, of um, wallet share, of as a service. We can drive these down and say, okay, here are now things that this opportunity answers to in terms of the goals, the close rate. You see that here in the top right, the close rate, the annual um, uh, recurring revenue, the attach rate, right? How much of this am I selling with another, with another solution? The overall CX efficiency. So now in our conversations, we can make that clear link between the higher level corporate goals and how this one specific project would help solve for that. We can um, dive one level deeper here, um, looking at the, the specific capabilities or solutions or features that make this happen. And we can cascade this down as well. And you see here, if you compare, we, uh, we're missing one, right? We have close rate, ARR, and efficiency. We do not have attach rate. This specific idea of a next generation customer self-service account may not be directly related to the attach rate, but it's one of those things that we need to create a better self-serve experience. So we can get even more granular in having those goals um, being very specific. One, one specific feature may solve for one aspect of the overall goal, but we may we may not answer to all, but several goals, several um, capabilities will then enable the overall response to the goal. So pretty granular, pretty detailed, and it helps us to be very, very actionable in our execution. Also, you know, what do we what do we measure at at, at those moments? Um, can we can we actually pull in metrics from our sales organization um, from Salesforce uh, and say, okay, what is the current attach rate as we're building this capability, and what after we deploy this capability, do we see any movement in the attach rate? Right, that tells us. It gives us a correlation. It doesn't give us causation necessarily, right? There is something, there's a signal that's moving. We're now getting closer in terms of net business results. That attach rate is actually moving, which is pretty cool. Um, but we don't know exactly if our customers really think that self-service experience had everything to do, was the only thing that drove that attach rate, or if there was a conversation with the salesperson or those kinds of things. How do we get there? In, in our workflow um, with the insights feature that um, friends that they do just released, it's cool to you know, use that to, to document insights along the journey. We are also using it the other way around where we're saying, okay, we do want to understand more about this moment in the purchase um, segment here in the buying experience and say, hey, could you guys run a different, a new and different analytics report? We may have baked in analytics into that part of the website anyways, but can you run a custom report that specifically tells us where they clicked in terms of adding features, adding, adding, adding things to their basket, so to say, and same thing with a survey of the customers there. So it's kind of cool that we can now send, send up upstream, uh, more specific, more qualitative research requests. So that's the, that's the top down. Um, I'm just going to go um, real quick in the bottom up and then hand it over to you, Johan. One of the examples um, that I wanted to share is, is not it's not the full walkthrough in the, in the journey management environment, but um, we I mentioned our work in the employee experience, and we did some discovery um, around the new hire journey mapping here and found some some onboarding pain points, and we cascaded out from there and said, okay, you know what, really what's behind that is one of the key reasons is faster, simpler availability of information, a push 
to people that are involved in the hiring process versus a pull for them to having to find this. Uh, in this case, we actually um, did one round of co-creative workshops with stakeholders to drive a little bit more engagement. But in this bottom-up kind of scenario, uh, ultimately what this led to was a um, high-level business goal in the HR organization that um, is all around improving information availability and flows and also highlighting the availability of existing information itself. So in, in terms of an internal internal marketing campaign. So this would be an example where a bottom-up, a very specific, very detailed journey mapping project ultimately led to a establishment of a higher level business goal. Okay, so Florian just shared a top-down approach that helps you to align and connect your journeys to business objectives, making sure that you're working on the stuff that is most relevant. But there's also a bottom-up approach where you allow your journeys to inspire new and better business goals. If you're curious how that approach works, click the video over here. If you ask me, this way of working unlocks the true power of working with journeys. I'm really curious if you will feel the same after seeing that presentation. So click the video over here and I'll see you over there.